Now so far, two of the best and the biggest in every sense of the word budget smartphones of 2020 are these two beastly blowers here, the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the Realme 6 Pro. For under 300 quid here in the UK, you get a complete package, including some impressive camera tech and the kind of specs that will satisfy even the most demanding of users and gamers. So which one should you buy? Well, let's do a full Redmi Note 9 Pro versus Realme 6 Pro comparison to see which one might be best for you. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now the first thing to note about these budget handsets is you certainly get a lot of fun for your money certainly in terms of the dimensions. They are both absolute hand fillers. Here on the Realme 6 Pro it's a 6.6 .6 inch display and on the Redmi Note 9 Pro it's slightly bigger at 6.67 inches. So the Redmi Note 9 Pro is ever so slightly taller probably about the same in terms of width, uh, but you'll notice that of course those displays pretty much fill up the front of both phones. There are very skinny bezels surrounding those screens, so it doesn't really bulk it up too much. Besides that, the only obvious way of telling the difference between these phones from the front is of course the selfie camera. You get a little pinhole effort right in the center here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, whereas on the Realme 6 Pro, it's a double selfie effort wedged away in the corner there. Don't worry if you're not a fan of notches though, because you can quite happily hide them away out of sight or on individual apps as well as just in general. Now flip both of these smartphones over and you'll see it's a shiny bit of glass there on the rear end, but it's not a straight up mirror reflective finish. What you get is a kind of a hazy multi-reflective uh, design here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, very trippy stuff. And on the Realme 6 Pro, it's a very distinctive lightning bolt design. And you've got a small choice of colors with both of these budget blowers as well. So the Realme 6 Pro can be grabbed in lightning blue or red. This is the lightning blue version, of course, both very moody hues, but uh, definitely liken those colors. And here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, you've got a choice of this one here, Interstellar Grey, otherwise Glacier White or Tropical Green. And don't worry about whether these phones are tough enough as well, because you've got a Gorilla Glass 5 finish on both of them. And both of them have a splash guard finish as well, including around the ports and the other orifices as well, to help prevent water from leaking in and damaging them. But definitely don't go dropping them in the jacuzzi or anything like that, because chances are that's not going to be good. When we finished simply gazing at the gorgeous design, it's time to actually get them unlocked and have a bit of a play. Well, you'll notice that both of them have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into their power button. In both cases, nice and responsive and super accurate as well. As you can see, just a quick tap of your digit to the surface. You don't have to actually press in the power button or anything like that, and you're straight into your desktops. And you've also got a good bit of face unlock action on both these smartphones as well. Although I found here on the Realme, you tend to have to swipe the screen before it uh, attempts the face unlock. Whereas here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, if it doesn't recognize your finger, it just immediately defaults to that face unlock. Gives that a good go. And as you can see, boom, straight in. Now let's take a look at the software on both of these budget smartphones and you'll find that it's a bit of Android 10 on both of them with a little bit of the manufacturer's own overlay slapped on top to give each phone a distinctive look and feel set it apart from the other. So here on the Realme 6 Pro you'll find you've got the latest Realme UI, a fresh new launcher which is based very heavily on Color OS. And in the case of the Redmi Note 9 Pro you've got Xiaomi's own MIUI launch, in this case MIUI 11 which has just been superseded by the fresh new MIUI 12. Now the major difference between them in the current incarnation is the fact that here in Realme UI you've got the option of sticking in an app store to tidy away all of your apps, you don't have to leave them all cluttered all over your desktops. Unfortunately in the case of MIUI 11 that's not the case just yet, you've got to have them all stuck away in folds and things like this is a freaking iPhone or something. However, Xiaomi has promised that the Redmi Note 9 Pro will get an update to the latest MIUI 12 which should add in an apps tray, uh, so hopefully that will be coming in the next sort of month or two. Apart from that, you get all of the standard Android 10 features that we know and love. So for instance, there's a good bit of gesture navigation. So just swipe from the edges to go back, swipe up in order to go back home. Oops, get there eventually. And of course, swipe up and hold in order to bring up all of your recent apps. Have a good flick through all of them. You've got plenty of other gestures support. You've got good old dark mode and the like. So yeah, all your standard Android stuff is in there, plus a buttload of bonus features too. One of my only complaints is that the settings menu is quite messy on both of these smartphones. Sometimes you'll have to be hunting around for quite some time to actually try and find the feature that you want. Even if you try using the search bar, sometimes the name of each feature isn't exactly obvious. But the good news is that even though these are both budget blows, both the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the Realme 6 Pro support all of the other features that you would expect from a smartphone, including dual band Wi-Fi support and a tasty bit of NFC action as well. And of course, you have full access to the Google Play Store to download fresh new apps and everything too. Now, when it comes to the display tech, both of these blows are definitely perfect for streaming a good bit of media. You've got a 6.6 inch panel on the Realme 6 Pro, 6.67 inch on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, so very, very spacious indeed. And both sport the same full HD plus resolution, 2400 
by 1080 pixels. So what you can expect is nice, crisp, detailed visuals, whether you're checking out your pics, whether you're watching a bit of Netflix, whatever you're up to. I didn't notice any technical issues with either of these smartphones either, no color bleeding or weird dodgy viewing angle issues, anything like that. Of course, you don't get HDR support or anything, but the contrast is absolutely fine on both of them too. Color reproduction is very, very similar on the pair of them as well. They sort of veer towards more accurate colors, uh, but you can play around with the color temperature and all that kind of shenanigans in the display settings to get it suited to your own personal tastes. And of course, yes, you do have those pinhole selfie cameras, which can intrude on the action a bit when you go full screen on the likes of YouTube. But as I mentioned before, you can block those notches out of view if you find that troublesome. Now, one area where the Realme 6 Pro definitely has an advantage over the Redmi 9 Pro is the refresh rate. If you dive on into the display settings, you'll find that here on the Realme, you've got the option of bumping up from 60 hertz to a gorgeous 90 hertz. And what that means is basically a nice super smooth transition whenever you're flipping around on your desktops uh, through menus things like that and I don't know why I'm bothering to try and demonstrate this because I'm shooting this video at 25 frames per second so you won't be able to notice it at all but never mind just take my word for it that Realme 6 Pro is super smooth and uh, that's the kind of feature that you really really do not expect to find at a sub 300 pound price point so it's great to see it on this blower now on the audio front it's a sadly not a stereo speaker setup on either of these budget blowers if you want that sort of setup on a budget smartphone you'll have to look to something like the Moto G8 Plus instead where you get a single downwards fire and mono speaker uh, but both are respectably loud uh, but I've got to say the overall quality definitely better here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro. So just a quick demonstration. In the UK for just over 500 quid. Say hello to the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G. Now both of these gaming smartphones offer strong value for and then the Realme. In the UK for just over 500 quid. Say hello to the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G. Now both of these gaming so as you hopefully heard there the Realme 6 Pro is a bit more tinny a bit more gritty on that top volume as the Redmi Note 9 Pro still sounds fairly smooth. Still, both of these smartphones do offer up a headphone jack, and in case of the wireless support, my preference is definitely towards the Realme 6 Pro. You've got Bluetooth 5.1 on this bad boy, compared with just Bluetooth 5 here on the Redmi, and you've also got full Dolby Atmos on high-res audio support out the box here on the Realme as well. The Redmi supports HD audio, but you will need to mod it to get the likes of Dolby Atmos on board. Now, no bother on the performance front. It doesn't matter which one you choose. If you're a more demanding user, you want to use lots of apps, you want to do split screening, or you want to do a good bit of gaming, because both of these smartphones are powered by Qualcomm's Bargainus Snapdragon 720G platform, which is built to keep you entertained and get you gaming on the go. Now, on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, you've got 6 gigs of RAM stuffed in there to back up that 720G. and the Realme 6 Pro, you've got a choice of 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. This is actually the 8 gig model, hence it's performed slightly better, as you can see there, on the Geekbench 5 benchmarking scores. But it really doesn't matter which of these budget blowers you choose. Either of them will definitely do the job for the likes of PUBG Mobile, no problem at all. That particular title tops out at 30 frames per on both of these smartphones for me at the HD detail level so it's a bit of a shame you can't bump it up a bit more really test out that 720g chipset but you know what the game plays absolutely beautifully no matter what you're up to bombing across landscapes in a car things like that you'll see the odd kind of slight fluctuation uh, especially on the Redmi Note 9 Pro I did notice a couple of little frame drops when I was in a vehicle but it, honestly either of them will absolutely do the job perfectly fine and both Realme UI and Mi UI have their own built-in gaming mode as well this can be easily called up at any time while you're blasting through a title in order to block notifications, give you a performance boost if needed, record your session, all that kind of shenanigans. Now let's move on to battery life and there really isn't a weak entry in this roundup. The Realme 6 Pro definitely impresses with its 4,300 milliamp battery but the Redmi Note 9 Pro is the champion still with a 5,020 milliamp cell. And both smartphones started this roundup with 100% life. As you can see the Redmi Note 9 Pro is faring a little bit better with 94% still compared with 92 here on the 6 Pro and of course I've been doing exactly the same stuff on both of them. But you know what, both the Redmi and the Realme will get you through a full intensive day even if you're never off your smartphone whether you're do a bit of camera action, a bit of Skype and gaming, whatever you fancy. You've got the usual battery saver modes and all that shenanigans to play around with as well. And both of these serve up a tasty slice of 30 watt fast charge as well. So you can charge them both up in not much more than an hour. And there's no difference between them as far as storage is concerned. You get a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of internal space depending on how big your budget is. And you do have a micro SD memory card slot to expand that storage on both of these smartphones. And the good news is that's separate to the dual SIM slots that come packed inside both of them too. And let's finish up this budget smartphone roundup with a look at that rear camera tech and 
both of these blowers use a 64 megapixel primary lens for capturing your everyday photos and home movies, although they do use a different Samsung sensor. I find you get very natural looking results on both these handsets, certainly as far as budget smartphones are concerned. Very attractive, packed with detail, uh, and the colors are generally quite natural as well, as long as you leave the AI mode off here on the Redmi Note 9 Pro and this chroma boost feature here on the Realme 6 Pro. If you're going to be doing a lot of shooting outdoors though, and really strong lights, lots of uh, high contrast scenes, I definitely recommend the Redmi Note 9 Pro though. I found that on the Realme 6 Pro, those HDR situations, you tend to get a little bit of oversaturation creeping in. It's not quite as good. By default, both phones use a bit of uh, pixel binning, uh, but you can actually shoot at that maximum 64 megapixel resolution if you like. And you've got a buttload of other bonus modes on here, all of the stuff you'd expect, including a bit of portrait mode action to make use of the depth sensor to get your subject nice and crisp and just provide a nice little bit of bokeh action in the background. You've got a pro mode on both of them as well if you uh, like to fiddle around with the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance, you can shoot in full raw format as well on both of these handsets if you want to edit on the fly. And there's a good bit of night mode action as well if you want to shoot those low light shots just to have to brighten up the overall image. And on both phones you've also got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens as well just to get a nice pulled out view. Very handy if you're trying to get a group shot or trying to capture a nice sweeping vista or a massive monument, something like that. And you've also got a macro lens on both of these budget blows if anyone's actually bothered about that, but where the Realme 6 Pro once again really impresses is with its two times optical zoom thanks to its dedicated telephoto lens. That's something you don't get here on the Redmi. You do have a zoom option, but it is just digital zoom. So you'll find you get much sharper results here on the Realme. And no, it's not exactly going to be taken on the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S20s, the Huawei P40 Pros, that sort of stuff. But you know what? It's incredibly rare to see a telephoto lens here on again a budget smartphone around that 200 to 300 pound price point. So just like the 90 hertz display, good on your Realme. As for the video chart, you can shoot at 4K resolution on either of these smartphones uh, with quite rubbish image stabilization. I'd definitely leave it at full HD if you're going to be shooting and moving around at the same time. Very similar results for both of them. Audio pickup strong and uh, yeah, nice, uh, slightly vibrant color reproduction. But yeah, good looking stuff. Now, if we swap around to the selfie camera setup, well, it's a 16 megapixel primary lens on both of these budget blowers, and they'll do an absolutely fine job of shooting your mug, even in quite dodgy lighting conditions. Of course, here on the Realme 6 Pro, you also get a secondary 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, so you can switch to that if you want to do a nice groovy, as they're not. Oh, God, I feel the bile rising up my throat just when I say that word, to be honest. Uh, but if you want to shoot a good bit of background action, if you're doing your touristy snaps in front of the Eiffel Tower or whatever, doing all that bullshit where you're like, oh, I'm poking the top of it, look at me, mum. And there you have it, that is what I think of the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the Realme 6 Pro two of the best budget smartphones so far in 2020 under that £300 price point. So what do you reckon which one might be best for you? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Check out all my best budget phone roundups for more ideas. There are plenty of great ones knocking it about, that's for sure, from like some Motorola and Oppo as well. And uh, yeah, have yourselves a lovely weekend, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.